All right, so um, our next talk coming up is about automotive ethernet fuzzing, um, from purchasing ECU to some IP fuzzing. Please help me welcome to our stage our next speaker. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Jong Hyuk Song, who is the first source of this research. The title of this talk is <coughs> Automotive Ethernet Fuzzing, from Purchasing Issue to Some IP Fuzzing. In this talk, I would like to describe how to purchase automotive issue, how to set up them, and how to do some IP fuzzing. So who we are? We are all <coughs> sorry. We are all red team and blue team members in Autocrypt. <coughs> Autocrypt is a mobility security company, and especially we focus on the automotive cyber security. We have conducting pen testing and fuzzing testing with automakers and tier suppliers. Also, <coughs> currently we are developing a forger for automotive-specific protocols such as CAN and automotive Ethernet. So in this talk, I would, would like to share tips, know-how, and my experience uh, how to do automotive Ethernet forging using your own issue. But you know, 20 minutes is not enough to talk the details, so please don't hesitate to contact to me. So this talk is trying to answer the following two questions. First, how to set up test environment with the real issues. Second, how to do automotive internet forging on that issue. So this talk will be a practical guide to some IP forging with the real issue. I hope that it will be useful for car hacking beginners. So let's talk about first the advent of automotive internet. Recent vehicles are becoming more complex than smartphones, so they are required higher data bandwidth for various functions, such as ADAS and infotainment system. But CAN is not enough to handle it. So automakers have started to adapt automotive Ethernet. After BMW released their cars with automotive Ethernet, many automakers have released their car supporting automotive Ethernet. Let's take a look at the automotive Ethernet network layers. Automotive, <coughs> automotive Ethernet is based on TCP and UDP. There are two main protocols in automotive Ethernet. First one is DoIP. It's a diagnostic protocol. It's almost like UDS CAN. Second one is some IP, which will be covered in this talk. It's a control communication protocol between ECU such as remote procedure controls and event notification. And there is, actually there is one more, some IP SD, which is some IP, SD, some IP service discovery protocol. <laughs> it's a service discovery protocol. Uh, using this protocol, issue advertise their services <coughs> and can get the information about services running in other issue. Uh, sorry about bad condition. <laughs> so, why we do automotive internet fuzzing? As you know, automotive internet has adapted recently. <coughs> so, automotive internet has not yet been tested enough. So, there is not much research about. Also, there is not much research about it. So, let's try some IP fuzzing with me. It will be fun. Then, should I? Should we buy a car? Is it essential? You know, it's expensive to buy a whole car for every single test. This is why we cannot try car hacking. We cannot buy a car every time whenever we want to test. So in this talk, we suggest that let's hack an issue first. If you succeed to find vulnerability in that issue, maybe you can exploit a real car. But how? Buying a, buying a car is difficult, but buying an issue and set up them is not also easy. <coughs> First, where can you buy the issue? And which issue is proper for test? <coughs> can you know the issue is supported some IP or not? If we know that, how to set up the issue? 
how to connect and how to wire them with my PC. In this talk, I'm going to tell you how to do that step by step. <coughs> First step is selecting issue. Not all issues support automotive internet. So we should buy an issue that support automotive internet. We can get this information in the wiring diagram of the issue. Second step is buying issue. You can buy the used issue in eBay, but we bought the issue from, from BMW official service center. This is new one. <coughs> Third step is set up test environment. In this step, we wire and connect between my laptop and issue by referencing the diagram and pin map of the issue. Fourth step is network configuration for some IP. We should configure our laptop's network, network setting to communicate with some IP services in the issue. And next step is discovering some IP services. We should find out the service ID and port number of the some IP services running the issue. After that, finally, we can do forging. Okay, let's talk about how to select the issue first. First, we should select the issue. In this research, we chose a head unit issue of BMW iX model. The reason why we select the head unit is most head unit issues support automotive internet. The reason why we chose BMW is <coughs> BMW is automotive internet industry leader. As I say, BMW is the first automaker to release a car with automotive internet. Another reason why we chose BMW is BMW provides their issue information on technical information site. So we can get the information about the issue, such as wiring, wiring diagram, pin map on the TIS. This is why we chose BMW. <coughs> so now we have to check the wire diagrams to find out whether head unit issue really supports automotive internet. <coughs> These are some screenshots of the BMW TIS site. Actually, this is the paid service, so I should hide some parts of the screenshot. Please understand that. You can see the whole information on the TIS if you pay. In this site, of course, there are lots of issue data, so you can search the data by bin number to find what you want. So right figure shows that, shows that we found the wiring diagram of the head unit issue by searching. Maybe you don't have a BMW car, so maybe you don't have a VIN number, but don't worry about that. You can find the VIN number on Google. So finally, we can get the wiring diagram in TIS. You can see that there is an internet line in the diagram. So finally, we can be sure that this head unit issue supports automotive internet. So let's buy it. In South Korea, some official BMW service center sells issue. But I don't know the other country service center also sell issue. Anyway, we bought a new issue from service center. We just called to the service center and asked to buy the issue and we visited the service center to get the issue. Tesla also shell, sells issue, but you should install the issue on your car in the service center. It means you cannot bring out only the issue to the out of the service center. In Hyundai case, you can get Hyundai's issue from the Hyundai Mobis Center. Of course, you don't have to buy the new issue always. You can buy used issue from eBay, if you search the issue on eBay, maybe you can find lots of used issue. But I cannot guarantee that the used issue works well. Also, it's difficult to find the latest model. Okay, now we've got the issue. Let's set up the test environment. This is the overview, our overview of our test environment. Uh, this is the issue. Oh, there is no my mouse cursor. Yeah. Above that, there is issue. <coughs> and left side, there is my laptop. And we connected the laptop and the issue using the media converter. The media converter is the essential device for stand, 
for testing automotive Ethernet. Automotive Ethernet is different from the standard Ethernet used in the normal PC environment. So, if we want to communicate with the issue using automotive Ethernet, you should convert it. The media converter can do that conversion. And there should be power supply to supply power to the issue. This is the real part of the previous overview. <coughs> and there is the issue, and there is a laptop, there is a media converter. And actually, we also bought the display because we expected to see something on the display, but it was not that useful in, the, in this test. Anyway, uh, there is a power supply to supply the power. And, oh, sorry. If you want to connect like this, you will need a wiring diagram and pin map to know which port in the issue. And which port in the issue is for automotive internet and which port is for power and which port is for display. I'm going to show in detail how to each part was connected. So let's connect power first. To connect power, you should find power pin, ground pin, and ethernet wake up pin in the pin map. <coughs> if you find all of them in the pin map, you can match, the, match with the real issue's pin. Then you can connect them to power supply. I cannot show you the real pin map in this slide because that's uh, uh, not free data. Anyway, then we connected the display by also referring pin map. <coughs> now let's turn on. The BMW spring string showed up on the display. So we can know that we successfully supply power to each device. <coughs> now let's connect the issue and the laptop to communicate automotive internet. Also, you should check the pin map and find the automotive internet port. In this case, the rightest port of the issue is either report. So we connect it, connect it to the media converter. Then we connect the media converter to the laptop. This media converter has two Ethernet port, SFP port and RJ45 port. SFP port is used to exchange some IP data between laptop and issue. RJ45 port is connecting control page of the media converter. Maybe each media converter has different interface, so you should check the manual of the, your media converter. Now, uh, connecting and wiring is finished, then we should configure our laptop's network settings to communicate some IP service. <coughs> Before that, I'm going to tell you virtual LAN, which is VLAN. Automotive Ethernet uses VLAN to separate in vehicle network logically because they want to isolate the traffic from different domains. So anyway, if you want to communicate with the issue by automotive internet, you should know the VLAN ID of the issue's network. The issue net, the, uh, the VID is in the VLAN tag. There is one more feature in uh, Ethernet frame with the VLAN tag. So, to communicate automotive internet, you, we should find out the VID. In previous step, we connected the issue and the laptop so we can see the some IP package by using Wireshark. You know, Wireshark is an amazing tool. Uh, there is already some IP plugin in Wireshark. So we can see the some IP package very comfortably. As you can see, we can see the VID in the packet. <coughs> and of course, we can know the IP address of the issue. Uh, one thing you need to be aware is some USB to Ethernet adapter doesn't show VLAN ID. I don't know why exactly. Maybe some adapter, network adapter, doesn't support VLAN. Anyway, if you cannot see the VLAN ID, uh, it's a good idea to change to another adapter. So now we can configure the network setting for laptop. In, in Windows, you can find the VLAN configuration, configuration in Ethernet properties. You should set packet priority and VLAN enable and insert the VLAN ID in the VLAN ID section. You should set IP address, which is in the same subnetwork of the issue. 
Okay, now let's talk about how to discover some IP services. <laughs> Usually, there are several some IP services in, services running in the issue, and each each service are running on the different ports with different service IDs. So, to force or some IP service, <coughs> we should know the port number and service ID. There are two ways to get the port and service ID. First one is checking offer message. Usually, most issue periodically broadcast offer message containing the service ID and port numbers. <coughs> this offer message is the one of the some IP SD message is a kind of advertising message. So we can know the port and service ID from the offer message. Second method is sending find message to the issue. <coughs> find message is also one of the some IP SD message type. If there is no offer message in the target issue, you can use the find message. If you send a find message to the issue <coughs> with all possible service ID, the issue will respond with offer message only for the available service IDs in the issue. So from the response, we can know the available service IDs and port in the issue. Right figure show that one of the offer message, you, as you can see, there are port number and service ID in the offer message. So, uh, now we are ready to force. This is a structure of some IP packet. To generate parsing input, you, we should know about it. First, there are service ID and method ID. I recommend that you use the available service ID method ID in parsing data. <coughs> if if forging input contains unavailable service or method ID, the input will be filtered and issue will return unavailable service or unavailable method ID. I already described how to find available service ID in the previous slide. You can find the available method ID using similar method. And next, client ID and session ID is not that important in my experience. Also, protocol version and interface version are fixed to always one. You don't need to forging them. <coughs> and there are several message types in some IP. <coughs> the message type of the forging input should be one of the values in this table, right table. And last one is payload. It's most important. Each some IP service have their own payload format, so mutating normal packet is the best strategy. The way to get normal packet is just connecting several issues. If you can connect multiple issues by automotive internet lines, they will exchange some IP packets. Then you can get the normal packets that, uh, that can be used for a sheet of the fuzzing. Then how to monitor the issue state? How do we know whether the fuzz are found, crash or issues? We recommend the three methods. <coughs> First one is return code. In some IP message, there is return code. You can guess the issue state, but it's, it's hard to know the detailed information. Second is checking response to the valid request. After the forging input transmission, you can send a valid message to the issue. Then if there is no response from the issue, we can guess that the some IP service is dead. Third method is checking periodic some IP SD message from the issue. If target issue broadcasts some IP SD message periodically, you can check whether the message is still transmitted after forging. Also, how to implement some IP forger? Luckily, <coughs> sorry, there are already some IP Python library in SCAPI, so you can easily implement the some IP forger using Python. So we've, until now, we've tried forging tests to the BMW head unit. Actually, we tried to many OEMs. And we still keep trying to various strategies, but we cannot find any issues, issues from BMW yet. But actually, we found some crashes from other OEMs issue. I want to share it, but I cannot disclose it because of NDA. Please understand that. The point of this talk is describing the method, how to solve my forging using your own issue, not describing vulnerability that I found. 
So <coughs> anyway, I conclude my talk. In this talk, I want to tell you two things. First, you can do car hacking using ECU. You don't need to buy a car. I hope that you will try your car hacking by buying and setting up issues. Second, I introduced how to do forging on some IP services of the real issue. I think forging all over the internet has not been sufficiently studied. It's early stage. There is still much to forge. So I recommend you guys to try test the automotive internet. This talk can be a good guide. In fact, recently we are also trying to IP forging. I hope that you can share some results soon. Okay, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.